the PlayStation Vita is quite possibly one of the finest handhelds that ever released. Unfortunately, it never had the chance to fully flourish, but thanks to the ability to mod the system, it can now get the attention it deserves. Here are 10 reasons to mod your Vita. Let's check them out. The main issue that many people had with the PlayStation Vita was the astronomically overpriced memory cards that the device required. It was a real chore having to constantly delete and re-download your favourite games due to the limited amount of storage that they offered. Thankfully, once you mod your Vita, it is now open to a much more cheaper type of memory in the form of SD cards. By using SD to Vita adapters, which are now widely available online, it allows you to leave your memory woes at the door and have access to an insane amount of storage without ever having to worry about carrying extra cards with you or shelling out for more overpriced memory. With all the ROMs, tweaks and changes you'll be making to the Vita, it's a good idea to get a decently sized card, and with them being so cheap nowadays, there's bound to be one that suits your needs at an affordable price. There's nothing better than being able to fully customise your console. Having the option to add that personal touch that comes along with modding your system is one of the main reasons to make the decision to do so. Don't get me wrong, the Vita did see its fair share of themes through the official store, but thanks to the custom themes manager that becomes available once modding the system, a whole new range of user-generated themes are at your fingertips. From Persona to Windows XP and Evangelion, there are a ton to choose from, which are not only visual, but also come with custom sounds as well that help make the theme come to life. If you've exhausted the official amount of themes available on the store and want to take the look of your system to the next level, this alone is a reason to mod the Vita and make it well and truly yours. Quite possibly, quite possibly the main reason to mod your Vita has to be the ability to emulate. Thanks to the work of the dedicated community, there are so many options when it comes to this aspect of modding the device. From NES to the Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, the Neo Geo, N64 and Mega Drive, and so much more. It turns the Vita into your one stop for playing a whole host of games from the past, especially the PSP and PS1, which allows you to play any of the titles that released, including the ones which weren't on the official store. With save states, filters, screenshots and cheats, there is a ton of functionality baked into each emulator. There are several options as well, such as RetroArch, which conveniently gathers them all into one place, or specific emulators for certain machines if you prefer that method. It really is a great way to relive the golden years of gaming, conveniently packaged all into a robust and well-designed device. So if you're on the lookout for a handheld emulating machine, the Vita would make a great choice. After modding the system, it opens it up to a ton of tweaks that make the overall Vita experience all the better. From changing the hue of the screen to better suit gaming sessions at night, or finally having the ability to turn off the annoying PlayStation LED on older Vita models. There are a ton of little changes that can be made to alter the system to your personal preferences. Most of them can be found in the Vita's homebrew browser and are an absolute breeze to implement and install on the system. So if you're looking for a way to breathe some new life into the handheld, and even more functionality to the system than it already offers, there is bound to be a tweak that will suit your needs, making this reason alone one of the most enriching for those looking to mod the system. One of my biggest gripes with the Vita is the awfully small buttons, which at times are quite cumbersome when it comes to playing games. Thanks to modding your Vita, there is a way around this common problem, and that is by using a feature known as DS for Vita. As you would expect, it allows you to hook up the DualShock 4 with the Vita and use it as the main input device. This alleviates the issue with the Vita's small buttons, but you'll have to find yourself a stand or a dock for the system in order to use it effectively. Now this won't be for everyone, as not all the people who own the system have a problem with the buttons, but I for one found it a worthwhile inclusion after modding the system and it's allowed me to enjoy some of the games on the system in a much more comfortable way. This reason is highly useful for those looking to make content about the PlayStation Vita. Being able to capture from the machine is a bit of a chore, but this mod makes that process a lot more streamlined and cheaper. For the use of a feature known as Vita to PC, it's possible to stream your PlayStation Vita's screen to a computer. Because of this, it becomes incredibly easy to capture content from the console and will make some video creators' lives a lot easier when it comes to producing videos about the handheld. But obviously, that's not the only use. If you're just looking for a way to experience the Vita, 
millimeters games on the bigger screen, this is a great option as well, as it runs surprisingly smooth and offers a great method to enjoy those classics in a much more immersive way. One of the best features that comes along with modding your Vita is having the ability to change the handheld into a Steam Link machine. Known as Moonlight, the setup process is surprisingly quick and easy, but it does come with some limitations. For starters, on the PC side you need to have an Nvidia GPU, as this mod will not work with any other cards. Preferably a GTX 650 or better will do, in order for the mod to run correctly. It essentially turns the Vita into an Nvidia Shield, and allows you to enjoy a whole catalogue of PC games, from Fallen Order to Halo and KOTOR, the options are limitless which really helps expand the amount of games at your fingertips and makes the Vita a formidable streaming machine. If you have an extensive Steam library and a modded Vita in your hands, waste no time in setting this mod up, it will not disappoint. As you would expect, with modding comes community ports of classic games, and the Vita is no exception. Thanks to the extremely hard work of the community, one of the most high-profile ports available on the system has to be Half-Life, which is a real joy to see running on the system. Having this classic adventure in the palm of your hands is a reason alone to mod the system, and it all runs surprisingly well. Joining the list of ports is a version of Counter-Strike, Quake, and many more that managed to take advantage of the system, and they all feel right at home. Most of the ports are available through the Vita's homebrew browser which can be loaded onto the machine once you've modded it. And with so many ports on offer, there is bound to be one that will catch your eye. So once you've modded the system, head on over to it and check some of them out. A lot of great games on the Vita never managed to make it to the West, which makes importing and trying to enjoy them all all the more difficult due to the language barrier. One main reason to mod the system is that it gives you the ability to implement English patches for many of these games. By doing so it opens the gates to a flood of experiences that otherwise would have stayed in Japan, and allows those from the West to enjoy them in their entirety. If you're like me and are a fan of all things Japanese, then this reason will be one of the most satisfying, as we missed out on some real great games such as Uppers and Macross to name a couple. The process is incredibly simple as well, which makes it one of the easiest ways to finally give these gems from the East a go. Thanks to the open platform that modding facilitates, there are a bunch of dedicated community members who actively create new games and apps for the Vita. All of them are available through the homebrew browser, which becomes available once modding the system, and allow you to experience a whole range of unique games and apps, such as a bunch of homebrews like Super Mario Wars, Vita Stacks and Console Wars, to more useful apps like book readers, document creators and much more. There are new games and apps releasing all the time for the Vita, making this one of the most rewarding reasons to take the plunge and mod the system. To open it up to a whole range of uses you never thought the handheld could offer. Well that does it for today's video. If there are any reasons to mod your Vita that you can think of, be sure to leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe to stay up to date on future videos, and as always, thanks for watching.